Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. Today, my topic is direct sequence spread spectrum, or DSSS. DSSS is one of the most popular modulation and transmission methods in the wireless communications. Like a frequency hopping spread spectrum, or FHSS, which I talked about in my last video. DSSS also uses spread spectrum technology. With spread spectrum, narrow band signals are intentionally spread over a much wider band. FHSS uses hopping to spread data signals, while DSSS combines data signal directly with a high bit rate sequence. Let me use three simple examples in this lesson to explain how DSSS works. Let's see the first example, a very simple and general process. At the sending end, original data are going into a spreading modulator. Pseudo noise or PN sequence is added and mixed. In the spreading modulator, PN sequence or PN code, or we simply call chips, are much higher bit rate sequence, a series of zeros and ones. These chips make original data signals identical to PN code, close to noise level signals. The spreading modulator distributes the transmitted signals. Over a much wider band. At the receiving end, these transmitted signals are demodulated with the PN code, and the original data are restored. In the process of modulation and demodulation, two goals are achieved. One, each bit is coded. Two, signals bits are distributed. Over a much wider frequency band. Then, what's really going on inside the black box modulator or demodulator? Let's see the second example to pick at some secrets, not all secrets, how PN code works on original data bit by bit. Suppose we send two bit data, one and zero. In order to encode our original signals, we want to add some noises, which are PN sequence or chips, like this long series ones and zeros. Keep in mind, PN code has much higher bit rate than the original data, one and zero. Now we will use this exclusive. Or truth table to calculate so that we can get encoded and modulated transmitted signals. One and one is zero. One and one is zero again. Zero and one is one. We use the same calculation method to get transmitted signal for bit one. By the same principle. For bit zero, we use the same table again. One and zero is one. One and zero is one again. Zero and zero is zero, and so on. Now we get our transmitted signals, the combination of original data and PN code. From this example, you might notice the PN code. Consist a radio pulse that is much shorter in duration than the original data signal, like ten times shorter. The smaller this duration, the larger the bandwidth, the resulting DSSS signals. You might say, I understand the encoding part. However, I do not understand why spreading signals over spectrum could resist. Better against interference, jamming, and detection. Now let's see the third animation. The red area represents 
narrow band. Narrow band is easily jammed or interfered. When we're driving on a single lane road in a rush hour, we might move much slower and possibly get more accidents. In narrow band wireless communications, more power is required to overcome jamming and interference. After spreading, narrow band signals now take much larger bandwidth. The power is still the same, but power density is spread out, resulting in lower power and noise-like signals, make it harder to interfere and detect. In summary, DSSS has three benefits. One, more bandwidth is used. Two, data are encoded. And three, low power density and noise-like signals are harder to detect and interfered. These benefits could explain why spread spectrum technology and DSSS were developed and used and are still used in military communications in the first place. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you very much and see you next time. Oh, don't forget to subscribe.